So, hello everyone, my name is Laura, I'm from the Packet team, and uh, today I'm here with Simon from the Testing Farm team. Uh, we both work in Red Hat, and today we will talk about Packet and Testing Farm and their integration together. So, uh, let's start with some agenda for today. Uh, first, we will, we will very shortly talk about Packet. Uh, then we will switch to the testing farm. Simon will explain uh, testing farm, uh, its users, how it works. Uh, then we will switch back to the packet and deep dive into its features. Then finally we will talk about uh, packet plus testing farm uh, and their integration. Uh, and we will also talk about the use cases, uh, the users, and in the end we will show you some numbers, graphs, statistics. So starting with Packet, uh, Packet is an open source project uh, that tries to bring upstream and downstream closer, closer together. Uh, and Packet has two main goals. The first one is to validate upstream changes downstream. So it's kind of a CI system that uh, works in GitHub uh, or GitLab. And then the second goal is to bring uh, upstream releases to downstream and automate the process and make it easier for uh, Fedora uh, package maintainers. So uh, as today we will talk about Packet mostly in terms of Packet service, uh, which operates uh, on GitHub and GitLab and reacts to the events in the Fedora disk kit. Uh, but there is also a Packet as a CLI tool that you can install uh, on your Fedora and run it locally. So. Um, when the last vlog happened in Budapest, uh, Packet was in its beginnings and it didn't have that many users. Uh, but since then, I think uh, Packet user base has grown rapidly. So here you can see just some of the logos of some of our users. So for example, Podman, Systemd, um, Cockpit, NM State, and a lot of others. Yeah, so uh, now I will hand it to Simon. Thank you, Laura. So, uh, I have some points to keep me on track so I don't get off into the weeds. Um, so first of all, Testing Farm is a infrastructure as a service. It's a service that you can run your tests on and get results. Um, there's storage for artifacts, there's queues, and so on. Uh, but it's, it's more than that. Um, because you can run your tests on multiple OSs and multiple versions of those OSs and on multiple architectures. So uh, there's a, yeah, it scales. You can, your, your testing will scale. Um, yesterday, I don't know, you guys probably, maybe some of you were at Adam Williamson's Fedora CI talk. He talked a little bit about uh, how Fedora CI uses uh, testing farm and, um, CentOS stream Zool CI uses testing farm. Uh, that's in a public ranch, and there's also a Red Hat uh, ranch, which um, Red Hat, all the, red, all the rels are tested on. Um, and um, yeah, you can actually use that um, ranch as well. Uh, you get, uh, you, you apply for permission to use it, and you change your configuration and packet, and you're actually able to run your tests in the internal ranch too, if that's if that's allowed. Uh, and um, of course, testing farm is used by packet. Um, so, testing farm generally, is, it's, just, it's I mean, there's there's lots of moving components, but um, uh, your your t there's one API endpoint that your test is submitted to. You submit a, a a JSON request, post request to the, the API, then uh, the ranch is selected, uh, your request waits in a queue, it gets picked up by a worker, uh, the system under test gets created, um, installed with the fresh OS of your choice that you specified, um, and then the pipeline starts to execute your tests on that fresh uh, system. The plans run, um, and the results and the artifacts are stored, and you can access these um, even after the 
the VM is destroyed because, uh, yeah, that's, that's artif in artifact storage. Um, so you may ask, uh, what's, what's the benefit? Why should I use testing farm? Uh, you know, I could, I could probably hack something together myself. Um, yeah, you probably could. Uh, the benefit to using testing farm is that, uh, well, it scales uh, to all the different versions of OSs, but also uh, you don't have to maintain that infrastructure. Uh, you don't have to pay for it. So testing farm is, um, next slide, is it? Yeah, testing farm is uh, open to any Fedora or OS stream contributor team or special interest group. Uh, testing farm is also open to any public project, service, or initiative which Red Hat or Fedora maintains or co-maintains. And of course, testing farm is available to any packet user. Um, so, um, where was I? Yeah, so testing farm can be thought of as a backend for CI. Um, but first, yeah, we need to uh, talk about test, uh, TMT a little bit. TMT, in order to use testing farm, your tests need to be managed by TMT. I don't know if any of you have seen or used TMT before. TMT stands for Test Management Tool. And um, there is the notion of um, hierarchy and inheritance. So um, these are two things that uh, TMT will allow you to do really well. You can have core attributes that your test is, all your tests have access to. A very simple example is like a version number or something. Um, and then you have your tests and you have your plans. Um, <clears throat> and then there's stories. So stories are more something that is optional actually, but um, at a minimum, you'd need tests and plans. You need one test and one plan at a minimum. Um, but stories will help you to know why you wrote the test, um, why it's written that way. Do you really want to optimize it? Do you really want to change it? Was it written that way for a certain reason? It'll help you to understand your tests and, of course, other people to understand your tests as well. Um, so yeah, TMT also runs locally on your computer. It's a tool. Um, so you can, yeah, that's how you would develop your tests. You would, you would first try it out on your laptop, see, see how it's going. TMT will uh, create the SUTs, the system under tests, using VMs or containers. And um, that's, yeah, you don't need to, because of that, you don't have to worry about cleanup because once the, the test is done, it'll just destroy the VM and not contaminate your laptop, your, your workstation. Um, one thing to know about TMT is that it's not restrictive. You can write your tests in any uh, language you want, in any testing framework you want. Basically, you just have to call it with TMT for it to be able to run in testing farms. So say you're using PyTest or something, just call that test uh, through a, a wrapper or whatever you like. and then it will run. So it's, it's a test management tool. It's not a test writing framework. So it's, it's very flexible. Another thing you can do is you don't, so when you submit a test to testing farm, um, part of the request is the location of the, where your tests are. It's a URL uh, where your code is um, in, in a Git repo. And in there, it expects to find a plan where your tests are. So you could actually have just one plan in there with the URL to another repo where all your tests are actually there. So you don't have to technically keep all your tests with your code if, if, if it doesn't work out for some reason. Um, yeah, so actually, yeah, uh, one more thing to note with testing farm, you have all that scale, but with uh, packet, you have even more scale. And Laura's going to tell us more about that. Okay, so in the beginning, uh, I mentioned two main goals of Packet. So now we will deep dive to them. So we will start with the Packet as a federal release automation. 
And so that I can explain it, uh, I will very shortly go through how does actually the new code get uh, to the user uh, using Fedora operating system. I assume everyone knows this process, so just very shortly. Uh, at the one end, we have the upstream, the code, and uh, on the other hand, we have the user who wants to install the latest, greatest change. So there is a release that can happen, for example, in GitHub or GitLab. And then as a next step, uh, the source code needs to be stored somewhere. And for that, there is a Lucasite cache, uh, which can simply be an uh, archive database, let's say. And then uh, we have the distribution Git, uh, which is uh, in Pegier. Uh, there are the package -related files, uh, packaging related files. So we have spec file there. Uh, the sources file, and these needs to be adjusted uh, to the new change. There is, of course, uh, the Koji as a next step, uh, which is Fedora official build system. Bodhi, uh, the Fedora update system. And after Bodhi, here comes the change, uh, and user can install it via DNF, for example. So how does Packet fit into these steps and how can help uh, with these steps? Here you can see all these steps in one screen and actually on the right side you can see how Packet covers everything in the middle uh, between the upstream and uh, the user and the installation of the new software. So um, Packet uh, has basically some jobs that can be configured and uh, for the Fedora release automation, there are uh, four jobs that can be configured. And uh, they cover syncing the release, building the uh, updates in Koji, and then uh, bringing these updates to the Bodhi. So let's start with the first one. Uh, firstly, we have the syncing the release. Uh, that means we need to bring the changes from upstream uh, to the downstream. What needs to be done is that the uh, archives need to be uploaded to the Lucasite cache, and then uh, the spec file needs to be uh, updated, probably the version, the change log, and the sources file as well. And for this, uh, you can use one of the package jobs, either propose downstream or pull from upstream. And you will choose based on uh, multiple factors. Uh, so if you are an uh, upstream maintainer of the package, you can configure the propose downstream. Propose downstream is configured directly in the upstream repository, so you need to place the configuration file in the upstream git repo, and then a uh, packet will react directly to the release in GitHub or GitLab. Uh, the benefit of this is that Packet also provides you the feedback, uh, the results directly in the GitHub or GitLab interface. Here you can also see the uh, snippet of the configuration. So this needs to be placed in your upstream. And then you can also see a screenshot how Packet provides feedback about uh, the job. So the proposed downstream finished successfully. You will get a link and you can then see the PRs created in this Git, which I will show you in a while. But then, of course, uh, sometimes uh, you have a package in Fedora and uh, you don't have access to the upstream Git repository, you don't maintain that code. Uh, but in that case, you can utilize the pull from upstream. Uh, for pull from upstream, the only thing that you need to do is to place the configuration file directly in this Git. Uh, you will add the pull from upstream job. And after that, Packet will uh, react to the upstream release monitoring messages and will do exactly the same process. So it will bring all the changes to the uh, pressure to the Fedora disk git. And as I mentioned, here you can see on the screenshot uh, that this is the PR that Packet opened. You can see that the version is changed. The change log is added for the new version and also the sources are uh, updated. Okay, so what's next? Uh, after the maintainer of the package reviews the change, uh, the PR in the disk kit, and is satisfied with the result, uh, he can wait for the CI, and if everything is green, he can merge the pull request. Uh, but then, of course, the new changes should be built in 
Koji. Uh, and it can be tedious to do this every time there is a new release, so Packet can help with this as well. The only thing is, again, in this Git repository, add this little uh, configuration for the Koji build job, and after that, uh, each time uh, the pull request is merged in this Git, Packet comes, takes the changes, and builds them automatically. Here you can see uh, some packages built by Packet in Koji. Okay, but there is also another step, and there are the body updates, again, manual step, and uh, it's very repetitive. So how can Packet help? There is the body update job. So again, code snippet, uh, you can put this to your configuration file, and Packet will watch out for the successful Koji builds, and once there is a successful Koji build, Packet comes, takes it, and creates uh, the relevant updates for the particular release. Okay, so that was it for the release automation. Now let's check the other aspect of Packet, and that's Packet as a CI solution. So previously, when we were talking about the uh, downstream automation, mostly Packet should have been configured uh, directly in this Git, uh, but if we want to use Packet as a CI solution, uh, you want to validate the things in upstream, so the setup needs to be done there. So firstly, you need to enable the interaction with Packet, and that's either in GitHub. For example, here you can see the screenshot of the Packet GitHub application, uh, or in GitLab as an integration. So you just do a few clicks and install Packet in your namespace or repository. The next step is uh, that your namespace needs to be allowed, so you just provide your Fedora account system login, and we do the automatic matching so, very quick step. And then, uh, almost the last step is you create the configuration file. Uh, there you place what you want Packet to do for you. And if one of the things uh, you want from Packet is RPM build, uh, you, can, you need to also place a RPM spec file or at least add uh, some script how to obtain the RPM spec file. Okay, so after setup, what can Packet do for you? Um, the most used job uh, that Packet can do are the RPM builds. So the, for the RPM builds, Packet uh, uses the copper build system, and uh, basically you can configure Packet to build your RPMs for any pull requests, commits, or releases. And then, uh, for example, if you configure Packet to react on your pull request with each pull request packet comes, uh, forwards the new code changes to copper, the changes are built there, and packet provides the feedback about the builds uh, in GitHub again. Uh, as you see on these screenshots, we provide the links to the copper web UI, uh, the logs, and everything you need. Uh, one more note, so uh, with RPM builds, you can either validate your changes, uh, but also, uh, for example, you can uh, configure the builds for the pushes to the main branch and or for the releases, and then you can have some dedicated copper repository and users can consume uh, the builds from there directly. Uh, other CI job that you can configure are the VM image builds. So these are the follow-up uh, of the RPM builds, and uh, if you want to also create the VM image build, uh, then you just place a simple comment, as you see on the screenshot, and Packet will come, uh, check whether there is the build RPM, take it, and create the VM, VM image build for you. For this, uh, Packet uses the Red Hat image builder. So you can see in the screenshot, you will again uh, get everything you need in the GitHub UI. You have the links there, the status, and you are good to go. And finally, what we are here for uh, are the tests. So, as you probably got now, uh, Packet uses testing farm for the tests, uh, and the configuration uh, is very similar to the other jobs. So, uh, how does this work? 
uh, user enables packet, as I previously talked about, uh, sets it up in the upstream, uh, then optionally also configures the build job, and after the RPM seller build, uh, packet forwards to the testing farm the package NVRs of the copper builds, uh, sends the request to the testing farm, and then checks for the results. Once the results uh, are, uh, then the packet provides you the feedback again, as you've seen in the screenshots. So as for the configuration, uh, the test can be again configured both for pull requests uh, or the branch pushes, or also for releases. You can see that the configuration is really simple. So you specify the trigger, uh, and then you specify the targets you want to run the tests on. So let's have a look at more use cases, how you can utilize the tests uh, via Packet. So as Simon already mentioned, there is also a, a Red Hat range of testing farm, and uh, it is really simple to utilize this via Packet. It is basically a one configuration option, and there's the use internal TF. So you enable this one, and of course you need to reach out to us, we need to allow you. Uh, so that you can use uh, testing in the Red Hat infrastructure, but that's it, you're good to go. Uh, then, for example, if you have some really uh, resourceful test uh, which you don't want to run on each pull request, uh, in each push to pull request, uh, but you want to run it only manually on a comment, you again specify one more configuration option and that's the manual trigger. So after that, uh, if you are ready to test your changes, you can just post a comment and Packet will react to that. Uh, another useful thing uh, that can be done via Packet is that basically there is this configuration option TF extra params and uh, here you can specify anything you would specify in the request to the testing farm. Uh, so one of the things you can specify is some additional artifacts. So if you want to do some reverse dependency testing, cross-project testing, uh, you can just specify some uh, repository in the artifacts and uh, we will send these parameters to testing farm and you can uh, ease your reverse dependency testing like this. Then uh, there is another use case if you want to uh, define some custom mapping between your build and test targets. So uh, here you can see we have a RPM build job, copper build job, and the targets are configured for EPL7 and EPL8. But you, you want to run tests uh, then and define some mapping. So for the builds uh, with target EPL7, you will run these on the CentOS 7 on, and Oracle Linux 7, for example. So it's possible to define one-to-one -one mapping or one-to-n mapping. And another thing that was already mentioned, uh, if you have your FMF metadata somewhere else, not uh, with your test, with your code, uh, you can also specify the FMF URL uh, that points to some other repository. And you can also specify the FMF ref. And uh, yeah, Packet will forward this to testing farm and everything will work. And now Simon will talk a little bit about the interesting Packet usage examples. So uh, when preparing for this talk, Miro and I uh, looked through some of the stats um, on some of the, the users and there was a couple more, but these were interesting and they, had, they were running a lot of tests. Uh, the first one, um, these guys, Strimzy, they actually contributed to um, Packet. You can take a look at how, how they did it there. They, uh, they, they documented it. Um, maybe you already read this, I'm not sure. Um, but they, they don't use any of the building. Uh, they basically use the testing farm infrastructure to run their tests, but they don't do any building. Um, and Cockpit, of course, uh, uses Packet. Uh, they run the same tests that Fedora CI does, but they do it with Packet. 
and um, this project, Scupper, they, uh, th this is a default plan that will run if you have no tests defined. And uh, so even just enabling the uh, packet service, uh, the packet, packet integration in your repo, what you'll get is you'll get this uh, sort of sanity check. It builds your packages and it tries installing them. So at a minimum, just by enabling it, you get that functionality. This uh, project is using that. So there's, there's several use cases. Um, you don't have to use all of the functionality. Uh, at a minimum, yeah, you, you still benefit a lot. Statistics from Packet. Okay, so just for the sake of ha having some numbers to show you like how many users actually use Packet, so you can see some numbers for the past year. Uh, so the most used job is uh, the RPM builds in copper, copper builds. As you can see in the past year, it was uh, 76,000 builds. Uh, and then of course the, the testing farm usage. So there were uh, more than 40,000 uh, testing farm runs. Uh, and as I already mentioned, uh, the uh, downstream automation, uh, as for the syncing of the release from upstream to uh, downstream, uh, there were more, more than 700 runs of the sync. And here you can, you can also see the activity of packet bot uh, in the disk kit. So you can see in the recent months really active and also some badges we earned. <laughs> um, and then uh, we have the statistics also for the testing farm. Uh, so on the uh, image below, you can see the numbers. Uh, so in the uh, 2023, it is uh, 680,000. That's projected, so this, it's not the end of the year yet. Yeah, so you can see it is really growing. And as for the distribution of the users of testing farm, Firstly, we have the Fedora CI, uh, but then there is also Packet uh, with around the third of the usage of testing farm. So really nice. Uh, and if you would like to try Packet and testing farm uh, together or separately, it's up to you, you can check out our documentation. So uh, also Packet and testing farm documentation. And one more step. If you even want to contribute, uh, we are very open about the contributions. So uh, you, we will share the slides with you and uh, you can definitely check out the links. And uh, we are really happy to help, help anyone who would like to do some contributions. As Simon mentioned, uh, the Streamsy team helped us uh, and uh, they implemented some awesome features. So, uh, and the same applies for TMT and testing farm. Yeah. Um so I just want to mention that testing farm, we, uh, the code is, is public and you can contribute to it, but we don't have yet a nice developer guide or any kind of style guide or uh, community guide or anything like that. So you might feel a little bit lost, uh, but if you have the confidence and you know what you're doing, go ahead and make merge requests. It's, it's up to you. Uh, but there's no, we, we don't have it very, uh, welcoming yet, so to speak. <laughs> okay, and lastly, get in touch with us if you are interested in anything we have talked about. Uh, here are some contact information, so uh, matrix, email, uh, and we have also Mastodon account. So yeah, uh, make sure to get in touch with us. And uh, now it's time for your questions, if you have any. Thank you. Uh, I have a question probably re related to testing farm. If my test requires a specific hardware, is uh -huh. it possible uh, to define somehow or? Uh... Yes, there's, um, there's uh, if you look at the TMT documentation, you can see that you can specify a specific hardware. Uh, in the public ranch 
you'll, you'll have access to x86 and ARM. Uh, in the uh, internal Red Hat ranch, you'll have access to Beaker, which is full of interesting okay. hardware. So this is not just about VMs, but I can say... No, I you need... can use bare metal. Okay. Uh, in, with Beaker, there's bare metal access. With the public ranch, it's only VMs, okay. just for cost. All uh, right, yeah, I see. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, are there any resources for learning about how the, uh, which is the, the FMF is the syntax and the TMT is the tool? Is Correct. there any resources for how to actually use FMF? Because I guess the way it works is a bit different than other traditional CI systems work. So um, you don't really have to, FMF is technically like a, a library or it is a separate project but you don't have to uh, know about it. The documentation for TMT is sufficient to, to help you to use test management tool. Um, and it's, it's YAML, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not very complicated. And um, maybe I can go back to the slide. Yeah, if you go to the, if you go to the, uh, where do we have, oh, we don't have a link to the, TMT documentation. Um, I guess I'll, I'll, if anybody's interested in that, I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, but you can just Google uh, TMT and you'll find the documentation. And uh, yeah, it should help you get started. Um, yeah, if, if anybody's interested, maybe we can do a workshop later or something. Any other questions? Okay, so if not, then thank you for coming. <laughs>